Welcome. The topic of this video is how to install Arc Linux. You go to the website, you download the ISO, you burn it with um, Etcher, for example. Etcher works on, on Windows, Mac and Linux. And you burn it on a USB, you boot from it, and then you either have an old computer, which is going to present this particular bias image, which you boot up with this colorful logo, or you have a new one, and that's a UEFI. So both of them are, are important to know. And in my case, I can set my bias to boot from either. So choose, right? The thing is, um, and now I don't have to do this, but why all these lines? You see the lines that you can just navigate through it. It's, um, well, if people run into the problem and the first line doesn't work, right? Then you can go in here and you're going to disable Nouveau or enable Nouveau, disable Radeon. So in here, if you press on tab, you see what's gonna happen. It says Radeon mode set is one, you see? So it's actually on and all the rest is off. Nouveau mode set is zero and so on. With an escape, you're back. And if you press on tab here, you are going to say Radeon is zero but Nouveau mode, mode set is one. So it might happen that you need it. It all depends on your hardware and we don't have your hardware, right? So these are the lines you can figure out, but there is even more. Um, they can, there can be parts of your computer that uh, the kernel says, don't know what to do with it and everything crashes. Um, but then you go to the internet and you type in your particular laptop or desktop or motherboard and you find indeed the solution that you should type something different in here. Well, you can just keep typing, right? Hopefully, ZRT QWERTY is no issue with you because you have to figure out to type correctly, of course. And then you go for an enter and it's going to be in there and you can boot from it. So that's an interesting concept in GRUB. Uh, sorry, in, in BIAS, this, this thing here. Um, GRUB will be later after we select here. But in the UFI, that's also a message there. You can't select all these things, that's one thing. And secondly, you need to go to the first line. Okay, so this is a overview of what possible things you can do, but mainly 99% just press enter in this case, right? And when on UFI, move up to the first line and then press enter. And then we're going to install. I have made several videos in the month of March telling you guys you need to know your candies. Linux is one big candy store. We have lots and lots of software just free. Choose out, eat up, spit out, choose another one and so on, right? Doesn't matter. Um, you can have a bunch of choices. And this is the Arc Linux ISO, which means this is our vision to work. This is our set of tools to make Arc Linux. And we have three browsers and we love it. And many of us, of our users love it too. And we have here several editors and so on. So this is our, what we call flagship. This is what we install afterwards, 15 minutes later, after everything is synced from the cloud. We're just working, we're just developing again on a new machine, right? So that's our vision of a, a working computer. Now, if you want to have something else, <clears throat> less, minimal, more minimal, so that's then the Arc Linux D for you, or the Arc Linux B for you, so that's a choice. This one provides XFC Openbox i3, so you can switch around. So if, you, if you're tired of XFC, then you put into Openbox, and, and maybe later in i3, so you can switch. That's always um, interesting to know that you're not going to be uh, restricted to one particular thing. And anyway, we have the Arc Linux 3 tool. And the Arc Linux 3 tool, we can just say, you know what, I'm going to test out PSPWM. I'm going to work on that one. Desktop installer. Click, click, it's installed. All 15 can be installed from anywhere. Anyway, okay. Now, before we install, I would suggest you run Gpart. It, does, it depends what's on here. Uh, if you have many partitions, then it's entirely up to you to figure it out. But um, I always believe in one 
operating system in one hard disk, one SSD preferably is faster than hard disk. And that's it. So I select everything that there is here and then say, okay, rubbish bin here and then apply and everything is gone. And then you have a clean slate. This is of course VirtualBox, meaning it thinks it's clean. Well, this is how it looks when your uh, SSD just came from the shop. You put it in, then that's the look. All right, and then we're gonna run Calamaris. And like I said, um, you need to know the candies. So there are lots and lots and lots of packages. That's, that's awesome. That's all for free. And you need to select. Maybe for the future reference, this is 3.2.20. Next. So Linux works with kernels, right? It has a Linux kernel, Linux LTS, Linux hardened, Linux Zen. So you can choose four of them. If you don't choose anything, it's gonna be the Linux kernel, right? If you have an NVIDIA card, and that's the 440, it's not the 340, 390, that's later on, after rebooting, you install those from AUR. These come from Arch, right? So if you already know I'm gonna need NVIDIA, why not install it right away? Depending on the fact if it's an LTS or a normal Linux kernel. The CUDA toolkit for NVIDIA, if you like it, Intel U code for your CPU or AMD, whatever you have, right? And then that's, that's the hardware stuff. That's the kernel stuff. That's that's what you have as both as as hardware if you want to have as Linux kernel. All right, that's hardware related. And then you go through all these things and I've made videos about it. So I'm not gonna talk about every single thing in here, but this is of course here due to well, the, the, the nice virus that is going to spread over the world, we need to communicate with each other. And there are lots of tools to communicate, to stay in touch with your loved ones. And that's, well, a selection of the, the better tools. There are more, of course. Okay. Only thing you have to do is select. So important to know is whatever you see in here, that's gonna be on the system anyway. You can't deselect anything. You can only add more. So that's why we say, the flagship becomes a cruise ship, right? More, it becomes only more, not less. So this is already in the system. Since this is in the system, it's not gonna be in here. Why mention something to, to, to not install it and then discover that it's installed, right? So no, um, only the things you can add are in here. Now we're moving ahead. If you're a developer, you can add more stuff to your system. Next, all the offices you can have. There is no office supplied. That's why the PC or the, the CD USB is such so small, right? You decide whatever you want to install. There's lots out there and it's just a click away and you have it. Now, these screens here will only work, of course, if you have internet, right? These are not on the ISO, obviously not. It would be a hell of a ISO. So you choose whatever you like. Hence the videos about uh, these tools, these applications. That's homework for you guys. Figure out what you want, what you need, or just uh, install all of them. It's up to you. And then decide later what you like. Internet, all kinds of applications you like to install or not. Theming, right? All kinds of themes. In themes, I can already say something. We have put a small um, button, this one, this ugly little thing with a question mark, gives us some information. Let's put this here as well. What people might not know, and that's why we have this warning here, is that some of these things clash. You can't have this one and this one. And it says here, X cursor breeze conflicts with breeze. Pac-Man is built that way that you cannot supply the same files and, and files files and folders well, on the same place. It's either from package one or package two. It can't supply both of them, right? So it's gonna conflict. So if you select both of them, nothing will happen. Your system will be installed, but one of the two will be installed and the conflict will just be passed. So it's a choice. You need to choose and that's why we, we thought, let's put it in here as a warning. And if we go back, there is another one, Visual Studio Code inside the, 
development guys here. Whoa, sorry. Development guys. Here's another one, code is actually open source and this is the Microsoft Visual Studio code. So these guys provide the same files, so choose again. And Synapse is back in uh, later on, I think, and it uh, conflicts as well. So choose LibreOffice Fresh or LibreOffice Still, choose VirtualBox or for Linux or Linux LTS. There are some choices to be made. And if you forgot what it was, then you just click on this button here and we'll add more to it if it's needed, all right? And then you just click away and say, okay, I'm gonna try out some games. Of course, this is gonna take long. These two guys, these four lines here, are two gigabyte to download. It's important for you to know. So do your homework, see how big everything is if you are uh, restricted in volume. Utilities here, all kind of utilities you can install. And I thought Synapse right here, yes. So Synapse and, and Catfish, these two guys, side guys, they conflict. So if Synapse is your thing, do it later on in the terminal, you'll see. And then it says yes, no, and then you decide in the terminal with Pac-Man what to do. Accessories, all kind of things. You can install any of the file managers. Go ahead, have fun. And same goes for terminals. If you have other wishes for terminals, here they are, and here's a possible conflict as well. So if you have, uh, if you chose for a Linux kernel, choose this one. If you chose for a Linux LTS, well, choose this one, right? It's a choice. It's not a conflict, it's a choice here. And this one is from us, for us, from us. When we are developing and we, we, oh, we install maybe over 100 ISOs every month, then we need to have our applications there immediately after installation. So we just click these guys and you'll see in Arch Linux D, it's a long list and Arch Linux B, it's a long list. But here uh, we have a lot of things already installed since it's a flagship and we only need these three guys. Then we go to next. Normally this is set. This is, if this is not set, that's good. No problem, just select it where you live, Africa, Australia, and select the zone. And then we go for next again. Choose your keyboard wisely, otherwise you're stuck later on. And then next. It all depends what you now have. You can have a com complex uh, partitioning here, but um, it's up to you to decide what you want. No swap, I have 16 gigabytes of memory. I say no swap, no swap. You can have swap no hibernate, meaning you have a little bit of swap, you never plan to hibernate, never plan to put your entire memory on hard disk and hibernate again, right? And this is indeed go to sleep, but the, the sleep is, is something in between. It's a hibernate thing. So everything is, is gone, uh, written down here, and you boot up again with all the applications open, hibernate. And then a the manual thing, if you would like to do that. Don't forget you can also encrypt. Um, we've tested it thoroughly, everything works. So encrypting with no swap, encrypting with swap no hibernate, encrypting with hibernate. So that means we have six standard options that just work out of the box. And the last one, the seventh one, it's entirely up to you to um, partition about it. And on articlinks.com, there is an article just about Calamaris, uh, 30 videos or more. and. The creating homes and boots and roots and all that kind of partitioning. And um, then we go ahead, we have no swap, fine, virtual box, right? Don't need it. And then we are going to go in. Either you log in automatically without asking for the password, okay, if you like so, or change another password, give it another one, or just keep it simple and stupid, kiss, right? Log in automatically without asking for the password. I'm straight on XFCE. I'm at home, no problem, desktop, laptop, maybe ask for login anyway. It's up to you, right? Next, install, and then we sit back and uh, wait for an installation to happen. If, if you have selected a lot of stuff, like everything from Calamaris, all the applications, all the toys from the, to the toy store or the candy from the candy store, right? then it will take some time. So have a dinner, um, go for a walk. But um, 
it will indeed um, consume a lot of bandwidth. Eh? If you selected everything, everything needs to be downloaded and installed. And afterwards, you'll have a super, super long list of all applications that are available on Linux. And you can have a go at it and have a look at it and say, okay, I'm going to keep this one, that one next time, next, and make a selection for our next installation, for example. So, at um, one message um, to, to end with, it might happen, we are, are very lucky with Calamaris that it's uh, providing us this service, right? It's for free, it's for, for all Linux systems, Lubuntu uses it and uh, so many others use it, like 20 Linux distributions use it. But at this particular version has the, um, the, 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 the message from time to time, like I would say 5% or 10% of our ISOs end up with a message, an error message, unmount and you mount is error and so on. That's no problem actually. It's actually great. Um, I'm, I'm not great, it's, it's, um, it's annoying, but uh, it means your system is installed. <laughs> so you need to reboot, as simple as that. So I've seen the second version, well, the, the new version already from Calamaris that just came out a few days ago and he has not that error anymore. So just so you know, um, I've made a video about it. If you want to see you mount error on Calamaris, that's the, if you want to see the image, maybe you can show this in the video. One moment. There you go. That's the image. So it's a video 100,441. Uh, and it's an image uh, that, of course, scares. I understand that. So installation failed, it says, right? Boost Python error in job U-mount. So remember the word U-mount. It just wants to unmount a particular hard disk and did not succeed in it. But unmounting is the last thing of the process. Unmounting is not important. <laughs> it's the installation that's important. So just remember, if you see it, that's going to be fine. In the meantime, the packages are done. So this, this particular phase here, here at this particular time, if you selected everything, it's gonna take a while. And now he's installing all the packages that you have selected. So you might think it's gonna be stuck. Of course not, it needs to download everything. Do you have a fast internet? You have a fast computer? It's all relevant and just sit it out. Wait for it to install, certainly with all the packages selected. <clears throat> the last phases. So this is already selected. All you need to do is a done. Now the ISO in my virtual box is still in there. So I'm gonna boot existing OS. This is what you see if you pull out your USB. And now we're booting up. You'll have XFCE. You can click this away, you can click this away, have a look at all our buttons, there are important things in here, like uh, choose your project, release info, core info, fast track. You can experiment, but sometimes it's faster to just have a look at the information here and say, I've seen that particular explanation somewhere and um, take a look at it. So XFCE, open box, i3, three, desktop systems in one um, ISO or one system. It means you can switch around, you can have a look, try this one and decide, nope, not my thing. I'm gonna log out again. I'm gonna take i3 and switch around. So, which makes it a little bit interesting in life, right? Switching around is always fun. So we have here toolbar, right mouse click, nothing's gonna happen. Control Alt T, super shift, enter. You need to need to know all these keyboard shortcuts. Super X, log out. And we're back in LightDM, which has served us over three years very well. And we're back in XFCE. And we can do our thing, all right? Enjoy, at guys.